In this tutorial we're going to be using Modern Lock on a 2008 C30 T5 which has had a bunch of hardware retrofitted such as power fold mirrors, front fog lights, trip computer and cruise control and we're going to be activating those with V-Dash after decoding the sempin with Modern Lock. Now as you'll see there is no ignition key in the key and it's not keyless, not present, we're just going to go ahead plug modern lock into the adb2 port and it will immediately spring to life where ahead we're going to go ahead and choose start decode decode choose the p1 platform And just waiting for the SAM. And there we go. It's away. I'll pause the video now because this takes about six minutes. And there's no need for us all to sit and watch that. Now here we are a few minutes later. The modern lock has decoded the SAM pin, saved it against the VIN and recorded it on the device. So we can access it later. Um, if we don't record it now, but I'm going to note it down and then move to my laptop to submit it to VDash, which will be the next part of the video. Now we have recorded the VIN and the PIN number. We're going to go ahead to D5T5's website and submit the PIN against the VIN. do is copy and paste the bin. The next stage we need the ignition in position two always with the actual key if you have a keyless car you have the dice plugged in down there in case you didn't know the waterfall was explicitly designed to run your dice cable through that's not true and then we're going to go ahead and start v-dash and get programming so i'm now going to go ahead and log into v-dash to make the changes that i've got uh, listed, enabling the fog lights, changing the headlights to the off is off, adding the trip computer, cruise control, uh, heated seats and deleting the steering column lock. So just wait for V-Dash to finish booting up. And it's remembered my login so it's going to go straight in and immediately it will try and connect to the Car. So we just wait a few seconds for it to detect the dice unit, which is already plugged in and ignition in position two. Then as soon as it's detected the vehicle, we will click on its VIN in the top left hand corner. Right. I'm going to go ahead and click connect. As we've already submitted the SEM pin code, we'll be able to go straight into car configuration and start using the wizards to make changes to the car. During this uh, programming session, the ABS light will flash on your dashboard. That's standard for P1 and P2 platform cars. It doesn't do it on P3s or SPAs or anything like that. Just P1 and P2. So it's completely normal for the ABS light to flash. Don't worry about it. So we're going to go and head over to car configuration. And the first one we're going to do, I'll show you, we're going to go through add fog lights, um, cruise control enable, dip beam configuration, seat heating, and trip computer. So let's go ahead and 
fog lights. And it's with, uh, so it's autom automatically chosen fog lights enabled, and then you have to tell them where the fog lights are, and this one is front fog lights and spoiler. And we're gonna go next. Agree to the terms, of course. I've already added credit to my account. And I'm just gonna hit the tick. And away we go. During this, the car will power off and on and off and on. Don't worry, it's completely normal. Don't adjust the ignition key, always leave it in position two while programming. Don't touch the key, don't touch the key. Any software updates that performed at Volvo after this will revert the configuration um, back to factory. But of course, you can make the changes again for free. You can turn any setting on and off, on and off, as much as you'd like in VDash, with no extra cost being incurred. Right, that's the first one done. So we're going to go back to car configuration. We've done the fog lights. And now we are going to enable cruise control. Here we go, hit the tick. If you do need to add credit at any point, you use the dollar symbol up there to go through the process. I've got quite a few wizards to go through, so I'm going to pause the video whilst I'm doing that because it's all a bit boring. So here we are, I've completed making all the changes. I'm now going to clear all the customer's fault codes. Often you can get uh, unexpected fault codes while, the, while making changes, but it's all right. And then I'm going to turn the car off and leave it for five minutes. And then we will check that all the functions are operating as expected. During programming, it's normal for the car to go fully to sleep and occasionally make weird clicks and noises and zzz and barbs and come on and off again. As you can see, it's doing so now. I want to read that the bonnet's open, of course, because we're on a charger. You always have the car on a charger whilst making configuration changes. Right now, it's just time to verify that all the settings have taken effect. And we put the ignition on. On it open and our wheel should now give us trip computer information there we go brilliant didn't have that before um, cruise control can't test right now headlight logic the dial is at zero so we should have no headlights let's go and double check no headlights Thank you, Volvo. Front fogs. Oh. Front fogs, front headlights, all working as God intended. Just start her up. C 
it's heating uh, configuration you can choose what temperature settings you would like the low and high to be um, I've got reasonably high on this anyway there we go so now I've selected all the changes that I want to make in the car which is um, adding fog lights adding headlight uh, configuration so that off is off adding trip computer adding heated seats adding cruise control and disabling the steering column lock I'm now going to go ahead and try and make those changes in V dash and it will ask me to add credit to add credit you can take on the little dollar symbol in the top then comes up with this page and you put your bullet point in buy credit hit the amount that you need for me it's 219 euros it may be different for you depending on your level of discount or region that you're in and payment terms I'm going to hit confirm and then it will take me to a payment gateway which I'm not going to record now the payment is completed we just have to wait a few moments for a confirmation message from VDash that the payment has been received before we can make any further changes there we go payment is successful click OK close the window and carry on confirm after each individual change VDash will notify you and then you have to click continue to carry on during programming it's normal for the car to go fully to sleep and occasionally make weird clicks and noises and zzzz and barbs and come on and off again as you can see it's doing so now want to mean that the bonnet's open of course because we're on a charger you always have the car on a charger whilst making configuration changes Okay, so it's finished all of making all of those changes, and it's usually best after you've made uh, changes to the car to turn it off and leave it for a few minutes to fully reboot. But what I'm just going to do now is take you through some of the advanced settings that are available. Usually, as a as a pro or pro verified user, you get access to the advanced settings menu, which has hundreds and hundreds of features. Obviously. Um, the basic accounts get just the wizards if you need access to any further features you can request it from um, vdash they won't charge you extra you just have to ask them and they will uh, they will do it but just for fun we're just going to go through some of the advanced settings that you can uh, that you can change whether you're adding headlamp washers removing them changing the audio level of the car changing the audio level of the car does require um, when you're using donor hardware, uh, MOST security delete so that you can plug in donor hardware without the car freaking out about it. But you can change to any almost any configuration level that you might imagine. But you do need uh, MOST security delete before before that. If your alarm is failing, you can of course delete it. Um, <laughs> If you fitted the uh, the passenger cutoff switch, you can, of course, enable it. If you've uh, got a child seat in the front, of course, we know about cruise control, trip computer. If you're adding a trailer module, parking sensors, steering column lock delete, fantastic. 
you can change the car from manual to automatic you can fit the all-wheel drive system uh, from a uh, v this is a c30 but you could use a v50 um, uh, all-wheel drive system neutral control on the autos of course always have it on disabled and I get access to all sorts of other little bits and bobs so that's an example of just some of the settings available you market related settings are always fantastically useful of course for um, imports so